Okay, so today I want to give you a chance to see Smart Notebook 10, which is the software that comes with a smart board. We can all use the smart board as just a mouse, or we can just pick up a pen and draw on it. But Notebook is the software that comes with it for you to design interactive lessons um, for your students. And what's really nice about Smart Board as far as interactive whiteboard software is there's a lot of really easy to use, fun, impressive looking activities that are in here. And that's what we're going to look at today. So first, let's learn how to open the notebook software. You may never have done that before. So I'm going to go down to the Start menu, All Programs, and I'm going to find Smart Technologies. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find Smart Notebook 10. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to wait just a minute and let it load. Oh, that was pretty quick. Okay, good. So um, the first time you open this, you may have a little pop-up screen that'll come up here. It'll be blue, and you can just close that out. But um, after the, and you can actually uncheck it so that it doesn't pop up anymore. But I've already done that. So this is just like PowerPoint. Really, we have a slide here. Over here, we have our slide sorter, and I can build pe multiple pages by clicking this button. I can toggle between my multiple pages using the arrows. So we're going to add some interactive flash activities to each slide. And that sounds complicated, but SmartBoard has made it really easy for us. So I'm just going to select the first slide. And over here is a little picture frame. If I click there, that's my gallery. And there's a lot of really nice things built into the gallery for us. Um, we are going to focus on the Lesson Activity Toolkit. So I'm going to click the little plus to expand that folder. And what I'll see here is a bunch of folders. I'm going to click on Examples. And from Examples, if I click on Activities, here's where I'm going to find the pre-made activities that we're going to work with today. So to repeat, all I did was click on the Gallery button, which is the picture frame. I expanded the Lesson Activity Toolkit. I expanded examples and then I clicked on the activity folder. Now it doesn't look like much happened, but down here at the bottom where it's blue, this is actually 23 files. I have to click there to get them to display. And now I can see all of the flash activities. I'm going to make this a little bit more narrow. And what you can see is all sorts of activities. And my first favorite is the category sort text. It's really simple. I'm just going to pick it up and drag and drop it. I could also just double click on it. And here we go. There's my little smart board man loaded and here's the activity. Because we went to examples, we have some things already typed in here. And that's good because it gives you an idea of what this activity is. This is my full screen button. If I click here, it expands the screen so I can see everything. And what you can see is there's a sorting activity here. There's a list of economic terms, and we've got to decide if they're pull or push factors. So what the students would do is pick up these and decide what category they go in. They'd be using the smart board, their finger, or um, a pen. And then we can click on check and get the answers. Well, this is great, but I don't teach economics. The beauty of this is that there's an edit button right here. When I click edit, now as the teacher I can go in and put whatever I want here. So we're going to do something pretty simple. We're going to sort animals that hibernate versus animals that stay active all year. And actually I want three columns because some animals do other things, some of them migrate. So I can have up to three columns just by clicking this little toggle. Now I need to go in and notice that all of my answer choices have changed from what it was before to my three that I selected up here, typed in. So now I'm going to go in and add my animals. I'm going to delete high wages and I'm going to say that a bear hibernates. I'm going to also say that snakes. have a hibernation cycle. And then we're going to go into this one and we're going to say that birds, they migrate. And so do bats. And 
Um, let's see. Bugs. Some bugs stay active. You get the idea. You can go through and change all of these and make sure that you set the correct answers. You can have up to 16 of these. So once I'm done editing this, I'm going to say, okay, here's my activity. It was as easy as that. And what I'll just do is close out of the full screen, file, save as, and I'm going to name this sorting activities. I'm going to throw it on my desktop. You could save it on your H drive if you know for sure you're going to keep it and you want it to be secure. Okay, so that was very easy. When I come into class, when I'm ready to do this activity, here is my sorting activity. I just click on it, it loads, and the kids can use it with the smart board. I'm going to go back into my sorting activity, though, and we're going to go to the page sorter. Let's look at another kind of activity that's available to us um, that's very similar in smart. So I'm going to click on page two, so I have a fresh page, and I'm going to go back to the gallery. And I actually, it's still open for me, which is nice. Um, if I need it to, I would click on Lesson Activity Toolkit, Activities, Examples, so forth to get to it. Okay, so let's look at some other activities that are here. This one is very similar, Category Sort Image. It takes a little bit more prep work. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and click over here so you can see the whole thing. This is the same idea. We're sorting into categories. Let's go full screen so you can see it. Except instead of sorting words, we're sorting images. So this is a, and this one's already made for you. If you need it, it's right there for you. Obtuse angle. The kids would use their fingers to do this. And then it self-checks. Ooh, I got some wrong it looks like. Oh, I guess it's a right angle. Okay, so how do we edit this? Just click the edit button. And now I'm going to go out of full screen. I'm actually going to minimize this. I can change the text. And active. let's just do two categories this time. And of course, I don't want these images here. So what I'll have to do is go online and find some images. So let's go to the internet. And I can sort search for images on Google by um, simply typing in what I want a picture of. I want a picture of a bear. And then clicking on this images up here. Oops, I might have to type it again. Now I've got lots of pictures of bears. So what I would like would need to do is click on the one that I want, make it as big as it will let me get it, which is, this is pretty big. I'm going to right click on it, save the picture to my desktop. So here's my picture of Mama Bear. I want to add it to my activity. I just pick it up, drag it, and drop it into the little um, area for the images. And that's how I change these. This takes a little bit more time because I have to go and find those pictures. So again, I'm going to go back to Google. Let's do a picture of a lizard. And I want an image. These are all images of lizards. What's nice about this is you can use real images. You're not, you don't have to stick to um, clip art. So I'm going to click on my lizard here. I'm going to right click, oops, and say save picture as, and throw it on the desktop again. I'm going to close this. And again, here's my lizard picture. Drag and drop it into the file. All right. So if I say OK, it saves all my changes. And now you can see where I've edited things. Let's go back to the page sorter and look at another activity. Let's go to page 3. Go back to our gallery. Another great um, activity here is pairs. So I'm just going to drag and drop pairs over. Now this is also an image um, 
ready activity you need images for it so i'm going to make it full screen so you get the idea this is a matching game sort of like memory kids would click on the numbers there's a bear and there's a bear those match wow i did really good for my first guess find the picture of the frog oh i'm very good at this let's see what happens if you miss one uh it flips back over okay so i can edit this and again, I'm going to have to find images, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize, minimize this by going to the little full screen icon. Minimize up at the top. Oops, not that much. I'm just going to shrink the sides. There we go. Okay, so again, I can just pick up my lizard here and drop it in. And then I could change this from lizard frog to lizard. It's that easy to edit. I want a real picture of a bear. Okay, we can make these anything. They could be pictures of adult animals and baby animals. They could be pictures of um, pupas and larval stages of the same animals. Anything that you want the kids to match. Pretty easy to change up. Okay. I'm going to go back to the page sorter. Let's look at just a couple more of these. Number four, I'm going to go to page four, and I'm going to go back to the page sorter. Let's look at the vortex sort. Now, again, we have a text and an image. I'm going to go ahead and just do the text. And this is a sorting game. Let's go full screen. The kids would decide, is three odd or even? If it is the correct answer, it takes it. If it is the wrong answer, it spits it back out. Let's go in and edit this one. All right, I don't want to do odd and even. I want to do verb and noun. first word I'm going to do cat. Cat is a noun. Run is a verb. And you get the idea on how to edit that. What's even cooler in here is if I want to make my page a little bit more interesting, I have the option to make my um, vortexes rotate. I'm going to click right there and say OK. So here you see the same activity but with your own personalized content in it and it was pretty easy to add it. Also we have the swirling vortexes. If you think that's going to bother some of your kids or be a distractor, you can always turn that off. So jump is a verb. Dog is a noun. Oh, cat, I got it wrong. So that's pretty easy and it's a little bit different and adds another level of interest to get your kids engaged go out of full screen again and let's look at one last activity I'm going to go to the gallery oops actually I want to go to the page sorter and I'm going to go to page five so blank page and go back to the page sorter and let's look at the timeline reveal pick it up drag and drop it again we can very easily edit this activity what this is is sort of like a, um, a tool to use when you're lecturing, or it could be a station for the kids to explore a timetable or a timeline of events. I'm going to click on the full screen so you can see how it works. It's going to be right here. And once you've made this timeline, the kids would just click on a date and they would see what happened then. If there's extra text, they could go and scroll down and read that. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this. To edit this, we just click right here, and it works just the same way as everything else. I'm going to go in and change my dates. In April 2000, oops, 1912, I'm going to go through all of these. I can have up to... 10 dates, maybe you don't want that many, maybe you just want six. Go in and change as much as you want. You click OK. And now when we go to full screen, 
this is a teaching tool. The kids can run up and click the date and then you, they can tell about what happened that day. Or you could lecture about that. It makes your activity a little bit more interactive. So anyways, let's go ahead and go back out of full screen and look at what we did today. We created, pretty simply, a sorting activity. We also created one that had images. We learned how to make a matching game with your own images and words. We learned how to make a vortex sorting activity and how to make our vortexes swirl. And finally, we learned how to make a timeline. If you have any questions with any of these activities, feel free to ask your technology integration specialist. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. Um, and happy activity making.